we're going to be looking at the utilities for Civil 3D 2020. Uh, the Imagine It uh, solution tools for uh, Civil 3D. Um, like I said, my name is Leo Levi, and I work for uh, now um, Imagine It Solutions. Uh, I work in the North Carolina-based area. I've been here uh, doing business for many, many years now, uh, and um, I am now working with um, Imagine It and got a chance to get my hands on these tools, and I'm I'm really delighted to speak to you guys about them. They're really, really great how they uh, add on to Civil and give us a, a, a lot of tools and a lot of functions inside of here. I'm really going to focus on 12 of the tools uh, that we're going to see here today. See if I can blow through this PowerPoint here so you can guys get a, a little insight on what the tool set looks like. And let's see here. Um, these, these are 14 tools that uh, load up to your ribbon up there. Uh, there's a couple of new features available for this particular year. Um, this tool set from Imagine has been available uh, for a few releases now, and every year we add something more to it. We add something more to it. We edit and we alter and we fix how something is uh, working based upon user input uh, from you guys, uh, how it's supposed to work, how it's feeling, how it's not working, what it could do better, and uh, hopefully you guys will enjoy um, what we have available up here. I, I have a, f a couple favorite tools up there that I enjoy a lot, and uh, you'll you'll see when, when I get to them. My piping tools are just oh, awesome. So we're going to be able to see those here uh, as we go through. Uh, just stepping through this uh, PowerPoint here, uh, I, I do like this option to create labels for points. Uh, this allows us to, uh, well, strip out away our, our topo or survey and create labels for the points themselves, where they call it the point, the, uh, the description and its location in reference to an alignment, so to where these elements are at, whether they might be uh, key uh, surveying data, those uh, monumentation or iron pens, or maybe utilities that we want to call out. It does associate the label with an alignment so we need to have that there because it does create an, an alignment label and the routine runs really neatly here on the screen to create these labels uh, throughout the length of an alignment I, I like it I, I like it. it's um, pretty simple pretty neat and uh, uh, built in with a uh, quite a bit of intelligence uh, we have the point stakeout report. Uh, yes, uh, Civil 3D does have a report built into it, but what we're able to do is, is create our own table and, and our own formatting here really, really easily by just uh, a method of uh, just checking and adding uh, options here that, that I want to see the point number, northern, east, and elevation. Instead of trying to hack into that XML report that comes out of the box, we have a really friendly user interface to do this, and we're able to kick it out into an HTML, as you can see there, or uh, into a text file version. So uh, just a little a little enhancement and flavor to what you do have available out of the box, but really based upon user feedback on, on what they wanted to see, really surveyors that wanted to take a look at something like this. Uh, importing uh, imagery. Now, the software does have the ability of working with the geo-reference location, which was added a few years back, uh, but looking at the ability of bringing in Google is a function that we lost back in 2012 for my longtime AutoCAD users. Uh, I love it. They're... Other than having the tool set loaded, you don't need anything else. You don't need any of the Google Earth or Google Maps or any other applications on there. It does tap into the Google imagery and the Big Map imagery. What it also does, it pulls terrain. And it's based upon the USGS uh, quads that are available out there. So it, it gives us a great starting point for designs. Of course, we works best if we're actually geo-reference and not at some assumed 5,000, 5,000 coordinate system or 10,000, 10,000. If we're tied to grid, this works really neatly of giving us that backdrop uh, to our uh, existing locations. Of course, we're at the mercy of free data, so it is as good as it is free. Um, pipes. Oh, man. There are so many awesome little tools available inside of here. And granted, we do have the ability of editing pipes from within Civil 3D. We can go to the Properties Tool Palette. We can go to an individual uh, pipe or structure. Or using the Panorama Box, we can engage the entire network. But it's really, even at that level, one object at a time. And it's a, through, a, through a, a table or a dialog box. And what we give you are so many awesome tools inside of here to uh, allow you to adjust the slope on the pipe quickly, very much like we are able to adjust uh, grades on uh, feature lines with a quick uh, grade edit. We're able to uh, adjust uh, a, a pipe network, uh, giving a starting elevation and ending invert elevation, or letting it solve uh, for a slope. 
uh, taking the entire network and, and quickly raising or lowering it. And the awesome part about this, it doesn't have to be your entire network. It could just be a portion of your network that you want to adjust. I want to adjust my first three pipes to a grade of 2% and my next three pipes to a grade of 1% and my next three pipes to a grade of a half or percent and per selection allows you to do this. The beautiful part about it is most of these tools allow you to modify the pipe networks in plan and in profile view. Uh, the other option again talking about how the software is very single object oriented is to be able to uh, swap out multiple structures all at once. I enjoy that functionality a lot uh, when we know that we have to do uh, maybe swap up for a material or a structure size really really awesome functionality inside of here I, I very much enjoy this uh, tool set here exploding and flattening a feature line well you can do that yourself yes you can just take a regular standard AutoCAD feature uh, civil 3d feature line and explode it or if it was a survey figure you can take it and explode it however you're gonna have problems with curves and granted there are tool sets that allow you to take a curve and uh, having it be from when you take a 3D curve and explode it, the thing is AutoCAD cannot support 3D curves. So it tessellates it. It gives you pieces to it. Um, very similar if you use a curve for a 10, it's gonna have to uh, create tangents. Now what this tool set does, it goes from feature line to 2D poly line, but it gives you an arc. Now a 2D poly line is just one entity, one elevation all the way throughout, but it's pretty, it's clean. You have an arc. You ha even though you start with a 3D arc, you end with a 2D arc instead of uh, this segmented line. And I'll go ahead and show it to you when we get to it. Uh, being able to create um, points from uh, geometry, although yes, the software allows you to create points from civil 3D objects or even AutoCAD objects, I like the the feature or option that we have to do this through a dialog box and engage geometry in one swoop and go ahead and create all the uh, points that we need uh, specifically for stakeout. Along with that, as you're creating points uh, on geometry, it gives you options to adjust elevations or even create offsets. Not only are you able to run on a line, but you can offset so many feet, for example, on back of curb. You can offset a foot off a back of curb at 0% grade or at an elevation difference and stake out a back of curb if you would want to. A great little feature as you're running through here to create points and dynamically add them to a point group as it creates it, you can manage it to then really then be able to do something with it, whether it's going to be a stakeout or create a text file. I, I like this tool the way that we uh, put it together in a dialog box. Creating points, excuse me, creating profile from points, which we typically don't think about this. Historically, we've had to create a terrain and create an alignment and sample a surface and then create a grid. I, when I think about this is the fact that there are no surfaces required for this. I wrote this up almost 10 years ago when I was working with the USDA and RCS. They wanted to create, because of the way they would survey, they would survey creeks and streams and swales, and their surveys were 100 feet apart. And trying to create a tin from a survey that was picked up so sparse and so scarce, the tin didn't really look good. But we knew what we wanted. The series of points across a stream or a creek were picked up that we wanted to create a cross section from. And there was a huge workflow that I wrote up. And now all you have to do is say point one, two, three, four, hit go, and the software immediately in the background creates an alignment. It creates a profile from those uh, selection and creates a grid for you without having to go through and create a tin. You can have a tin and sample it, but this is through points. I very much enjoy how easy this tool is, especially for those who may not be so savvy with alignments and profiles and how it does it all for you. Because a surveyor it is, is knowledgeable of creating terrain, but if your survey was that uh, uh, spare, so scarce, you can easily uh, get an idea of what your survey looks like just by picking and clicking a series of points. I very much enjoy this tool. It's really awesome. Uh, KML KMZ import. Now, Civil 3D, uh, this year, a couple of years back, I, I forgot which uh, it was, I think it was 2018, gave us the option to export. And this is the whole once upon we're able to do a little bit more and there's workflows out there on how to do these things. But now we have a tool set. The Imagine It tool set allows you to import and read in a KML or KMZ. 
There's no extra software needed. If you happen to have Google Earth, you can just drag and drop and see it and take a feel for what uh, that planner, designer, or client of yours was trying to do in Google Earth. We can bring it directly into Civil 3D and start taking that geometry and really uh, getting a feel for what they were doing and um, pick up right where they left off. I've, I think this is a pretty neat because uh, of that Google Earth being used so much out there. Styles Renamer, this is more for me, uh, cat management. It's more of an in-house tool that I, that I often use, uh, but I think it's a really great tool for my clients, whether maybe you guys yourself were, were um, acquired or bought out. Uh, maybe you're trying to call out um, a series of uh, styles by adding a prefix or a suffix for your company name. Or maybe you got somebody else's drawing and you want to run this tool set in their drawing to suffix or prefix, maybe add a little Z on there and put them all the way to the bottom. It's not about purging. It's about going through and at a drawing level or a category level, renaming a series of styles. That way you can easily have them call out or be pushed to the top or pushed to the bottom, whether they're yours or somebody else's. I think it's neat uh, what we're able to do with uh, the styles renamer. It's a, it's a really easy tool set uh, that allows you to do exactly what it says. Uh, and we will go back here at the end and tell you where to get all these tool sets. So that's pretty much it. I was did on purpose wanted to run through these um, uh, PowerPoint really quickly because I want to get into the, the fun stuff here. So let's take get, get a look into the fun stuff. I'm going to go here and start with my first drawing. And my first drawing over here is to create labels from uh, this point geometry. So I have a series of points here, I have an alignment that I'm running with here, and I have points on the screen. So yes, I have uh, quite a bit of points going on. And I can choose to, well, label these points as they exist. The tool set that I want to use here is under my Imagine It tab. And there's the uh, Auto Offset option. If I bring the dialog box into my screen, here we have some features. Well, this is going to create an alignment station offset label. Now, you may be using your particular um, template, and out of the box here, you can see how it's uh, wanting to default to some of mine. And uh, the deal is this tool set comes in the background with a template that feeds me these extra uh, styles. So that's why I see this here. If you want to use your own, that's fine. But notice I have the left and the right imagined style. I have the option of adding a marker because I am creating a station offset label. I have the option of adding a label and a marker. I'm going to say none for the time being because I do already have a marker for my symbol. The alignment that I want to work off of. And how far off as a min, as an offset distance and a maximum offset distance do I want to read? Because I have my center line here, how far out do I want to read and label these points as they exist here on the screen? Now, as I run through this, I have the option of creating a label uh, exclusively to the left, exclusively to the right, or really from looking at the alignment itself, whether you're on the left or the right, go ahead and create the label uh, facing the direction of your alignment. The other option here is to isolate to perhaps a point group selection. Maybe all I want to do is label all my... Uh, Utilities, maybe all just my catch basins, maybe all my survey data, the survey iron pins or the rods or the monumentation, so I can isolate this routine to a very specific list. I'm just going to tell it to just do all my points here on my screen. And as I go ahead and hit OK, bam, I get labels throughout my screen here. So I can start seeing that I get a label, and it's really a station offset label. As I select it, please look at the ribbon up here. This is an alignment label working off of a Civil 3D point. And inside of here, this is the label it creates. Please note how it takes on the uh, point number. It takes a station and the offset. And it even takes a description. That is a wood utility pole. So it creates these labels for me, these alignment labels, on the Civil 3D point objects. And that was the auto offset label, the very first tool set that I have here on my ribbon to the left hand side. Now these tool sets will load. We do have several releases of these tool sets and the only difference from year to year is you will see tools uh, really from this point on forward get added more and more. If you go to an earlier release, the 2019 or the 2018, you will see less of these tools be available because these were some of these tools were released just this year. 
as I move on forward here, uh, that's the first option. I think that's pretty straightforward and neat, being able to create what are alignment station offset labels pulling um, point object data. All right, cool. Next one on over, the ability of bringing in Bing imagery. Now, what I want to show off here is I bring this Bing imagery. Yes, I have the option to import from Google, and I get a dialog box for that. I also have the very similar option to import from Bing. It's straight up almost the same exact thing. Now, the import from Bing, guys, is very much as using the geolocation tab. If you if you happen to have uh, the geolocation tab up and running, great. Uh, the deal is our tool set came before this uh, tab was opened up for the public. So that's why we have on our Imaginate tab both the Google and the Bing option. Now, the beautiful part about this is whether you use the Google or the Bing option, it does not require you to have an Autodesk 360 account. That's one of the bigger differences than the Autodesk tool set. Now, it does require for the geometry to be placed correctly in space. And in this case, you will notice that I am DV twisted. North is actually uh, facing here to the right-hand side. So as I run this tool set, um, I'm going to use the Google option because that's the one people typically miss the most. I'll go ahead and bring that in. And I can focus on a certain portion of my area here. Now, the imager here is north facing north. And uh, you'll see that my roadway is east-west. But really, the roadway is north-south here. Now, uh, this tool set pretty much works the same for both uh, Google and Bing Maps. I'm just going to demonstrate the Google one because that's the one that people think about. And what I have here is the option of bringing in just the image or the uh, surface only, or both the image and the surface. I'm going to go ahead for that one. Looking at this uh, site here, yes, I do have survey data on my screen. But just thinking about uh, being able to bring this information from Google, I'm going to go ahead and bring that in here both choose the image and the tin and as I go ahead and hit OK I'm prompted with a dialog box the tin you're about to create how dense would you like it to be now this is only as good as the USGS data that's being uh, pulling from here if you want to try to bring this down to something crazy like a five foot grid you can try doing that it's not going to necessarily make it more accurate it's just creating a more dense surface from the original point data that was available out there. Now, the smaller the box inside of here, the more or the smaller distance, the more points you're going to create. This number is going to play a huge role on how long it's going to take as I hit OK from this box and it starts creating uh, that tin in the background. So let's uh, make this a little bit uh, more demo specific. How about we do a 20 by 20? Ah, uh, how about a 25 by 25 grid? All right, cool. 493 points in the area that you're actually seeing on the screen. So it's going to create this image, get that snippet, create the terrain from the background there for me. And as I hit OK, it's going to go through and process that. Now, we're at the mercy of the Internet gods here. Uh, yes, your machine is going to play a role here, but it's pulling this information from the web. So your Internet speed and uh, the services from Google are going to play a role in how long this box is actually going to take through and crunch the numbers and crunch the values. Of course, that density on that grid, I could have gone up to 30 or 50, and you'll, you would be able to see a much lighter surface being created. So there's a connection, and there is the object creation that's happening here in the background. And I'm also broadcasting this, so that's going to take it even a, a second longer there to go ahead and process. But then I get, boom, on the screen, a terrain and imagery. So go over here to the Prospector tab under Surfaces. There is a surface that came from that Google terrain. I also have an image in the background here that I can take on, on the image and pick on it. Get some image options. And I can take it. And how about we take that image and let's send it to the back. Boom. And there I get that gridded tin. I get data. Um, so that's what we have there. The image should, if, if we are uh, working with um, my data being uh, correctly uh, positioned in space, it should pull it and drop it into the correct location um, uh, on screen here. So I know that I am georeferenced correctly uh, on screen as this survey was brought in. So that's uh, how we're able to bring that. All right. Uh, and the, the process is the same using the uh, input from Google and the input from Bing. It is a very, very similar process. I just focus on the Google tool. All right, piping. 
uh, this is nah, this is just one of my favorite tools to use here. And I'm going to make my life a little bit easier. We have a small profile that was created inside of here. And you can see that there is even a uh, order created here from left to right. Let me see if I can line up my view a little bit better here. And there is my pipe. There's a corridor in the background. I'm going to make my life a little bit easier here, guys. I'm just going to freeze that corridor and just really focus just on the pipes. So there's the plan and profile of my design. And I want to take it one step further. Um, still using civil. This is out of the box civil, guys. Um, I am working with a split screen inside of here. And I want to run an analysis here and track my station. Now, as I do this, you'll notice that in plan view, there's my first structure, 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 and vice versa. As I hover over in profile view, it highlights them. This is a plan and profile view that was created for this particular drawing. Uh, if you've got been into one of my classes, I often do this where I split my views inside a model space, and then I run an analysis here via my station tracker. All right, cool. So let's talk about this, some of the awesome tools that we have here. And yes, we are able to do the standard edits here and focus on a particular pipe itself and go here to the pipe properties and add a single case by case, pipe by pipe, structure by structure, make changes. And what I can do here as I move on forward um, is make some adjustments. Let's take a look at some of these tools here. First tool I'm going to talk about is pipe grading. I'm going to go here and use the pipe grading. I will talk about the pipe elevation. I'll, I will talk about pipe envelope. I'll talk about swapping multiple parts. I even talk about the quick edit parts. I very much enjoy this entire tool set. But before I talk about any of those tool sets there, I would like to make a mention of my options. Because it does control on how or where the elevation that it's pulling from is uh, working with there. It's going to work with the invert. It's going to work with grade percent, and it's not going to apply rules. So uh, this was uh, an enhancement for this particular tool set as it's been available for a while that it used to ask you, hey, do you want to apply rules? Do you want to apply rules? So now we said, hey, we'll let the user wonder or not if they want to apply rules. So there's the option. Also, the drop at null structures, so uh, no rules or no drop is applied, as you'll see as we run through here. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and just hit OK there. That was the options over here on the right-hand side of my tool set. Pipe grading. I'm going to start with this first one. It's going to ask me for the select my first part. I'm going to select my first structure. And I'm going to go here and select the last structure. It says, hey, what would you like to do? Well, it reads that first invert. My first invert there is 621. Would you like to uh, continue with that invert or would you like to change it? I'm going to go ahead and consume and stick it at, at 621. Let's say there. What is the new grade that you want to run through here? Well, let's go here and be a negative 2%. So starting at, at 621, going down at a 2% from beginning, in this case, to end, I could have stopped somewhere in the middle, but I did from beginning to end. Hey, what is a drop you would like across these uh, pipes? And because I'm dealing with invert, it will be a 0.1 drop at a structure and go from beginning to end. And if you blinked, you guys missed it. There it is, 2% all the way across. Maybe if I adjust my scale here, you'll be able to see and read text a little bit better. There we go. Easy. Now, I did this from beginning to end. I could have done it to a portion of my design. More, more on this. How about I start messing with my pipe elevation? I'm going to say here, pipe elevation. And again, I'm going to pick just for giggles here from the beginning all the way to the end. So design. And would you like to raise or lower? I'm going to say, uh, let's raise this, and I'm going to raise it a foot. And you can see how the entire pipe network got bumped up a foot. This tool set works uh, on plan and profile. Uh, I can start messing with the inverts. Now, what I can do inside of here is say, hey, what I would like to do here is, as far as pipe inverts, I can say a beginning of my design and then the end of my design. And I can start messing with these elevations. I can start saying, all right, how about I want my start invert to be, let's raise it just a little bit, six, uh, 621. Let's raise it a foot. And I want to end this at 610. So what I'm then doing is letting the software figure the math out for me. As I run from beginning to end there, it figures out the math, 
it's going to ask me, hey, from beginning to end, what is the, the drop that you would like to apply to the, your design? Let's, I could leave it at zero. I could leave it at 0.1. I'll keep it at uh, 0.1. Hit enter, and there's my design. I started at 621. I ended at 610. And it uh, went ahead and, and uh, mathematically adjusted and concluded that 3.3% was a grade to fit my beginning and end elevations as I wanted for my design. Sweet. I can go through here and also start looking at maybe um, swapping multiple parts. I can pick on my pipes as, as I want them on my screen. I can pick one or two pipes inside of here. I would like to swap out my concrete pipe to be something bigger. That's a 24 inch. I'm going to do something silly here and bring it down to a 12. Hit OK. And you can see how it swapped both of those two pipes simultaneously. That was my swap multiple parts option. like it. I like to be able to engage an entire run or a series of pipes all at once. The last tool that I want to talk about here is a quick edit pipes. This is similar to the grading tool that we have. And as I engage this, I will tell you that this tool only works in plan view. So as I hover over, I do have the ability of hitting up an endpoint or a midpoint of a pipe. Notice if I hit an endpoint of a pipe, it allows me to talk to the invert. I'm at invert 621. I can go to a, a 620 or up or down. As I pick on that invert, I'm able to make changes. Uh, 622 and go up. Or I can hover over the center of the pipe. Depending on the direction that that little triangle is uh, showing, it's going to hold the invert that it's going away from. So in this case, it's going to hold invert 622, and let's go over at a uh, new slope of negative 2, and adjust that slope. Boom. How about we go at a 2%? So I'm able to, object by object, start looking at making adjustments to my design. Based upon the direction of the arrowhead, it's going to then uh, assign that slope, hold the invert on the opposite end of that uh, arrowhead, and um, adjust the pipes. Very similar to that quick uh, grading editor that uh, comes out of the box. I like it. I very much enjoy how easy and dynamic this uh, tool set is for us to work with um, pipes. I hope you enjoy it as much as I do. All right, cool. Next here, what do we have going on here? Um, working with my tool sets here. Um, all right, the uh, create create point offsets. All right, cool. Let's let's take a look at creating point offsets here. And as we start looking at creating point offsets, um, we can call upon geometry to run through this, and it's going to work off of a feature line. Create set of offset cocoa points along a feature line. So I have this roadway running through here. And if I take this road, uh, please note, I would first have to run the extraction because those feature lines are embedded as part of the corridor. So I have to run through that, um, uh, through that um, tool set here. So if I go ahead and pick on that uh, tool set there, there is a feature line that I, uh, that I pulled out. And that's the one I want to run my tool set on. So if I go here to my Imagine It tools, I can choose to create points off of that and select that feature line that I pulled out already, and I get options. So through this dialog box is, hey, do you want to go in a certain offset? Do you want to space it out uh, a certain way? Do you want to give that point a description as it goes uh, all the way throughout here? I'm just going to say F line, or maybe BOC, or, or, or daylight, whatever you want to call it. Starting number for your point set. If you want to mess with any of the uh, location of that point itself, yeah, I want to go ahead and offset a number of feet, Say if you wanted to go off a foot and be at a grade of 2% off of it. In this case, I'm just going to use a pile line elevation and not mess with the offset at all. I can create a point group as I go through. And as I run through this tool set, I'm just going to call it uh, stakeout. It can create a point at every vertice, sure. Or in this case, it can also create uh, extra points for you at the PCs and PTs. If you were doing a stake up, for example, on an alignment type feature line, and I can go ahead and hit OK. And it should have just run through. Come on. 
There we go. Oh, uh oh, well, um, good thing about uh, the way our tool set also works is um, if you happen to run into an error or something happens, I would recommend his uh, letting us know about it. And in this case, giving us your email, I'm just going to put mine in here. Um, issue creating. Uh, Offset points. Not sure what was going on there, but it did uh, lock up on me a couple times there. Not sure what was going on there. Let's see. Let's try this again here. It is very similar to this tool set that's available from out of the box to create uh, points inside of here. And um, let's see if I can give it a using the feature align elevation, using a point group myself here, and it will create a point group for me. So hopefully if I hit OK, there they are. Now it actually worked. And you can see the points being created there on the screen. And of course, the point group got created as well. There's my stakeout and the series of points that I want to. So from at this point here, I can start looking at maybe writing this out to a text file, to a table, to create a stakeout, maybe up uploading it to my data collector and uh, doing a little bit of work. So I, I think it's a neat option of being able to create points from uh, geometry that I have on the screen. Now, dealing with geometry that I have on the screen is um, taking a lot of times the, the survey line work or feature lines for grading. Um, and in this case, for example, here I have this uh, edge of pavement or back curb. Uh, it's an edge of pavement that was picked up. And you'll notice that it does have curvature inside of here, both on the left and the right-hand side of the street here. If I take this geometry and uh, choose to explode it, so if I explode this geometry inside of here, the basic AutoCAD explode command, it does become then line work. And you can see how those curves got uh, segmented there. And that's just what happens. Now, what I want to show off here is the option that I have to flatten and explode, explode line work. So if I then take this line work, this feature line over here, which is a survey figure, and choose to explode it, do you want to erase the original or not? For clarity purpose in this demonstration, I'm going to say yes to erase the original. You may not want to erase your original line work because it, you may be uh, using it to uh, create and use it as a break line or do other work with it, so be careful. Just for clarity purposes, I will take and um, uh, remove it. And it went to my current layer, created that geometry here for me, and now it, actually I do have arcs now. It is a simple polyline for me here. So it, it went from a, an intelligent line to a uh, polyline for me. But I do have continuous curve instead of a whole bunch of segments for here. As you explode it, it's a 3D polyline versus when you use our tool set, it becomes a 2D polyline because that's how it supports arcs. All right, cool. Let's see here. Let's see what else we have. Um, have the ability of looking at where is it point offsets types profile from points excellent so I have this drawing over here and if you wanted to work with civil 3d we do have the ability of creating surfaces and when you create a surface we have the ability of then creating an alignment and if you want to you can start uh, looking at creating a design so looking at this particular drawing here, the civil 3D way, let me make uh, this aerial imagery and turn it off just to make my life a little bit easier. If you do end up creating terrain and you have a design alignment, yes, we can easily create cross sections and plot all information on there. But what I would like to talk about is just dealing with um, just point data. Let me go here and go back to um, zoom to my sample line. If I chose to go through here and say, hey, all these uh, surfaces that I have right here right now, I'm going to select them. I'm going to get just going to straight up erase them. I have no I want no surfaces in my drawing because what I would like to talk about is the utility to be able to profile on a series of points. What I have here is a series of Kogo points soundings that we're taking on off of this beach. I am not going to necessarily run cross sections. I, this drawing does have cross sections already in it, just as an example. But that's not what I'm interested in. I'm looking at the series of points that I have here on the screen to create my sections, which are really not going to be cross sections. They're going to be alignment and profiles. But the command that I'm going to engage here through the Imagine It tool set allows us to create 
really an alignment and a profile from just a series of points. And that's what I see here on the screen, a series of points from left to right. Now, as I engage the tool, I have the option of, well, working with all the points in my drawing, which is not what I want to do. If I have a point group, that would work great. If I just had um, those sample lines as selected point groups, I could work with that. I can run with a window selection, with a numeric range, or pick, pick, pick on the screen. I'm going to try to run with a window select here. And this uh, should allow me to just uh, grab a couple of these points. Um, I have had uh, in cases where when I do a window select, it gets kind of squirrely and bouncy. Then I have to go back and manually pick the, the string of points that I want to. But let's go ahead with window select. The caveat here is this. You must assign a name and a profile. If you don't give your alignment a name and a profile, this is just not going to work. And I'm just going to call here. This is going to be my section one. And this is going to be my section one. Uh, existing grade. It's going to go ahead and create all this geometry here for me. It's going to create a profile view. It's going to create an alignment, but it's all going to happen all immediately in the background. As I give my point selection, notice I did say by window, so I can window on these set of points here and let the software run through it. It immediately creates an alignment for me. And what I can do here then on the screen is say, hey, where do you want this profile view to go? I can go here to the screen and say, well, I would like my profile view to be here. And there is the series of points as it gets connected. Now, I have seen it where it gets a little squirrely. And please note the stationing on my alignment is all wild. It goes from 7 to 1 to 0. It's because that crossing window, um, at times, it doesn't pick the points sequentially in the direction that you want it to. So as I engage this tool set, my warning from me to you is I have at times, instead of using the points from profile, the window option, even the point group range, if the point group range happens to be numerically increasing one, two, three, four, or up, up station, that's fine. Otherwise, you may have to do the section in drawing. I'm going to go here and say section two. This is going to be section, oh, no, this is going to be section three, e.g., section and I have been the most successful in actually picking the points that I wanted to go ahead and touch. Say this is the direction I want my geometry to go. The crossing window, I personally have had a couple issues where it kind of zigzags and creates something crazy. But now look at that 0 to 2 really neatly. We're over here where I did that crossing window, it did uh, got a little squirrely there for me. It did zigzagging and overlapping. But as I create the profile for that range, I can now see something that um, goes from beginning to end, more efficiently telling the story of uh, my beach profile there. I like this. I like this because, please note, I am creating alignments dynamically inside of here. But there is no surface being created at all. It is creating a profile by connecting the dots. And it creates a profile dynamically tied to those uh, points on screen. I think that it's neat. I think that it's powerful. And the only, thing, uh, the only reason I love this so much is because years ago, I had a workflow for doing all this, the exporting and importing and dealing with feature lines. And now it's all a series of picks and clicks from beginning to end. You're done. Cool. Let's keep on going inside of here. Uh, profile renaming. This is pretty uh, simple and sweet. We only have two more cells to, to talk about here is, is our session on lines here. And I want to leave enough time to address maybe some Q&A here at the end. And as you'll see, this particular drawing does have uh, quite a bit of an imagine it set up inside of here. So if you look at the labels, and it just has imagine it pretty much written all over the place. Now, if you don't care for imagine it uh, as being in there, or you want to abbreviate or maybe put, put it from a suffix to a prefix, it's all up to you. I'm able to go here to my style renamer, and I get options to, well, where do I want to focus my attention to? I can also create a filter up here. But I can choose to, all I want to do is not labels, all I want to do is object styles. More specifically, I want to look at, um, uh, how about I look at surface styles very specifically inside of here. And I could choose to check or uncheck. See, it finds that list inside of there and allows me to do something with them. I only want to rename a couple of these guys, or I want to rename all of them. 
I'm very specifically focusing on just surface styles. I don't want to sit here and have the software run through the entire drawing. So very specifically to surface styles, what I'm going to do here is choose to rename these and I have options to add a prefix, add a suffix, or even replace text. Replace text called, imagine it here. with um, nothing. Maybe I want to add a prefix or a suffix. I want to add a suffix at the end and just have it be at the end and I want to have it be IMG. So if I go through here and if I spelled it correctly, 15 styles were renamed successfully. I can exit out and go up here to my surfaces and it should have off the beginning part. Well, I'm on style renamer. Do this again. Let's look at surfaces. Place. Of course, if I misspelled it, it's not going to work out for me. And let's say rename. Okay. Exit out. So it dropped Imagine It from the beginning there. Spelling is going to be important. Casing should be uh, also matter inside of here. So just be aware, as a CAD management tool, it works really, really neatly. I often use this for my deliverables for my clients. And uh, just internally, if you want to have your style stand out, um, maybe you're mixing and matching with somebody else's stuff. You can take their drawing and run through a rename, maybe add a Z at the beginning of the name so it puts it at the bottom of the list. And uh, there is style management and purging and all that. But this allows you to just really talk to a series of, of styles or an entire drawing worth of styles and easily add a prefix or suffix or uh, fix um, maybe um, uh, your, your company's acronym, whether you want to spell it or write it or maybe you were acquired and you want to change that acronym and have your stand out maybe call out more specifically uh, uh, styles were created on a particular year and have them pop out there for you it's an interesting tool set all right the last one inside of here a KMZ import now the KMZ import is neat um, we do have the option of in this year from the toolbox not to be um, distracted here there is the option to export a KML but I'm talking about using my tool set inside of it to bring in uh, that information. Now, I'm going to go here and say KML import and uh, figure out that I am pulling this KMZ right here. Please note it will pull the K both KML and KMZ files, and I'm just going to go ahead and open it. And that is going to take a minute because it's quite robust. But if I take a look at this in my Google Earth, so I can bring that, I can just drag and drop that, that KML. It is a Virginia-based uh, KML file. And you can see the line work that uh, it's going to be processing to bring it into our, our drawing. So it really depends on how much line work is available in there, that particular file as it was saved out for us to be able to use it. We have the option of importing it. Civil 3D has a default option to export, but now we can consume it. So uh, your client or uh, your designer that is perhaps taking advantage of this uh, Google Earth, we can bring it in on over, and it is still processing. Hey, there it is. Import was complete. And as it finishes it off, I'll be able to see that line work here as well. Where are you? So it brings that line work on over for me. And it's just simple line work. I'm going to have to take some time to do whatever I want to it, maybe stylize it, put a particular layer. But now it's something that I can bring in and I can leverage whoever did uh, that sketching into my uh, AutoCAD uh, design by using the uh, Imagine It tool set. Guys, this was just a brief, just from beginning to end what you're able to uh, do with our toolbar here. As our session is uh, winding down here, I want to turn back over to my uh, presentation here. And um, if you're interested in taking a look at this tool set, um, uh, you should be able to just go up to our, our website, go up there to our software, and download it. Uh, this is a free tool set that's available to uh, all of our Imaginate clients. 
Uh, this is a tool set that is uh, branded from us and it is then activated through us. And uh, for those who are not our clients are interested in the tools, it is something that you could contact one of our sales reps and it's something that we could uh, sell to you as well as a tool set. So if you're interested and you like it, don't hesitate to reach out to us.